Welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for July 11th. I'm reading to you today from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the first seven verses of that chapter from the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. Here we go. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were heathen, you were led astray to dumb idols, however you may have been moved. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. This is the Word of God. Luther writes for us about the second verse. You know that when you were Gentiles... You were carried away to dumb idols, however you might have been led. St. Augustine tells us that the city of Rome alone had more than 400 gods, and that it erected a church for all the gods of the world, the Pantheon. Paul reminds the Corinthians of their manner of life before they became Christians, for he would have them pause to think that their gifts, past and present, are not of their own procuring nor are any gifts bestowed upon them because of merit on their part. Recall, he would say, your manner of life before you came to Christ. What were you? Heathen in darkness, having no knowledge of God, but suffering yourselves blindly to be led by anyone who would say aught to you of God. All your devotion was but a discordant worship. Each one, the child in the cradle, the infant at the mother's breast, must have his own idol. These superstitions you accepted as you were taught. You followed after them, praying and sacrificing to them, setting your hearts upon dumb idols which could not teach nor advise you, could not comfort, relieve, nor help you. But now you have turned from that manifold idolatry to the one true worship and have been enlightened by God's word. More than that, great and glorious gifts have been bestowed upon you in Christ as the discerning of the scriptures, diversity of tongues, power to work miracles, things impossible to the world. It is unmistakably evident that you embrace the true God, who does not, like dumb idols, leave you to wander in the error of your speculations, uncounseled by the word, a living God who speaks to you that you may know what to expect from him, and works among you publicly and visibly. Therefore it is not for you to make divisions among yourselves after the manner of the heathen, where one runs to this idol and another to that, each claiming superiority for his own knowing that you all embrace the one true God and his word. You are to hold together in one faith and one mind, not disagreeing as if you had a variety of gods, of faiths, of baptism, spirits, and salvation. It is human nature to overstep another, to try to be better than another, to um, make divisions among ourselves so that one of us uh, tries to be better than the other. Even the disciples did this. Uh, in Jesus' presence, the disciples clamored over who was going to be sitting at his right hand in the kingdom, who was going to be better than the rest, over the rest. But that is not why the Spirit has called us to be the communion of saints. That is not why the Spirit gives us gifts for the good of the church. It's for the good of the church, not for the good of myself. The Spirit doesn't give me um, the gift of teaching so that I can lord it over other people. He gives me the gift of teaching so that I may teach you. He gives me uh, various gifts at his own pleasure, not because I want them, not so that I will be better than somebody else. He gives them to me so that I may better the others through his power. Um, all the gifts are given for the common good. So, um, all of our gifts are to work together, uh, not in some discordant, disharmonious way. All our gifts are to work together so that there is harmonious worship in the church, so that the communion of saints is a true communion, that we are together working for the good of the whole church. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Lord, for your spirit, for 
your knowing that we needed him, that he is at work among us, even this Lord's Day, so that our worship may be harmonious, of a concord, that you would be blessed by it, and that your whole church would be blessed by your work in our service of worship. Wherever folks are today, um, receiving the blessing of worship. Uh, touch them as they uh, need it. Uh, give them today what they need to uh, carry them through this day in the days ahead in harmonious service with each other for you and for the world. We ask these things, great as they are, in Jesus' name, knowing then that they will be answered, for this is your will. Amen. Thank you for being with me today for Reading the Word with Luther. I'm Mark Ryman, the pastor at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Salisbury, North Carolina. And I hope one day that you might be in the area. Maybe you're in the area anyway. But I hope that uh, if you're in the area ever, that you'll stop in and worship with us some Lord's Day. There's a slide coming up here in just a second that gives you the address and the time of our worship. Uh, come and throw uh, your voice and your devotion into the harmony of worship at St. Paul's. In the meantime, I hope that you'll be back with me again tomorrow for Reading the Word with Luther.